kind. And he, he just, he said, oh, you're, you're, you just turned out so good. Your uh, physical turned out so much better than I, I could even imagine it would. And uh, so he says, keep doing what you're doing. So I said, thank you, I will. Praise God, amen. <laughs> Pretty good, amen. Who else? Trish. I just, I just spoke to Kara tonight. Uh, she was kind of lost. Uh, she don't, she can't, don't belong to youth group anymore, and she's a college kid. And so she's just like, what do I do now on Sunday night? She, and so today she was wearing a bless me, bless, bless, some a God t-shirt. And somebody else has had the same God t-shirt. Anyway, they belong to a, a college group. And it's a church that their church visited before and w to combine the youth. So now she has a college group that she could go to, fellowship, because she was really lost. Like, what do I do? So anyway, so that's a good praise report. Very good. Who else? I've got several, but I was trying to get someone else to do go. I don't want to hog it all. <laughs> There's Kathy. We'll let Kathy go first. We didn't have any contracts this week, so we'll be getting them Thursday, and hopefully there'll be uh, cones again. All right. Well, we went to the Good News Club again tonight, and Trish went with us. She wanted to check it out. So I'm believing God that she'll be able to help us. <laughs> be awesome. We had 15 kids tonight. We had nine last week and had 15 tonight. We had some older kids, and that was really cool because the older kids could help the younger kids. And as one girl helped, we played a game, and we, and we had different colored beanbags, and they all stood for something. And she helped the little kids if they couldn't remember what they were. She helped them. She was so sweet. The kids are just sweet kids. So I'm just so excited the gospel is being preached in the school, in our community. It's, that's just awesome, isn't it? That, that is, comes from years of prayer to get in there. <laughs> that, that, I'm just excited about it. And the next, pray for me, because next week, it's Lloyd and I, to get, it's just Lloyd and I, because um, Paul and Lois have to be God. So we, we'll do it, though. Amen. We can do all things through Christ, right, Lloyd? And Lloyd is learning how to do the puppet and Trish. You want to come to? Oh, bless your heart. Good. Thank you. Thank you. That'll be great. That'll be helpful. Okay. <laughs> and then the other, okay, this is an answer to prayer. Because um, Sunday night, first of all, if you remember, we, I wanted to have a balloon artist. And her name, um, oh, gosh, I forgot her. <laughs> Bar, uh, Bev. Bev. And, and um, so she was going to come. But her husband was concerned about her driving back late at night by herself. So Don and Kathy heard it. We, I said something about it Sunday night. And Don and Kathy graciously offered to let her stay in their upstairs apartment. And I let her know that. And we were communicating by, you know, um, just voicemail. And then today we prayed. And about 10.30 or so, we prayed about 10.30. Or so, she called around that same time that we prayed, you know, somewhere around that time, and, and said, Yes, I can come. And yes, thank you so much for letting me stay. That's the sweetest gesture, she said. It's so nice. So she is going to stay, and she's going to do it, and she's going to send me um, the different uh, character, the different balloons that she can do. And we're going to do Christian balloons, and we're going to come up with different scriptures that go with them. And then I called Diane Nelson because we wanted a, a job for her, and she's going to help do that too. So we're, And Royce doesn't know he's going to help with it too. <laughs> But Diane's excited about it, too. She's doing better. And so we had a nice visit. So, but she thought that was awesome. I said, there's nothing physical you have to do. You can sit there and talk to the kids and give them scriptures and give them the candy and stuff. And, she, oh, yeah, I could do that. So she was really excited about that. So praise the Lord. That's a good deal. And just keep, keep me in prayer. I started a new, you're not supposed to say diet, right? You're not supposed to say that anymore. But there's a new program, a new way of living. So <laughs> God's helping me. What's that? Food maintenance. Okay. 
So God's helping me through that. So just keep me in prayer. <laughs> and then another neat one, um, I saw um, Richard and Sandy Hawkins. Um, they used to manage the motel, and they were uptown right after we got done with the Vesti. And then I had talked to Richard on the phone just to call last week to make sure that the Keatons were coming. He was filling in, and I said, it's nice to talk to you. He says, well, we're going to help you with your um, carnival or festival now. And, and, then, and Sandy saw me, and she said, we've got to help you with that. And so I said, well, that's fine. We'll get that sent to you. And then someone comes up in the office later on this afternoon. It was Richard. He came all the way up to the office. He said, brought the first donation. I didn't even have to ask for it. And he brought us our first donation for the festival. And he'd never seen this building. He said, I've lived here all my life. I've never seen this building. So I gave him the grand tour. We went everywhere. And he absolutely thinks, he says, you guys got a beautiful building here. You got a lot going on. And he says, what's your, what's your plan? What's your dream? I said, do you want to have another building? I said, yes, I want to, we want to build. He said, well, that's exciting. And he's just right on, he's just right for us and just excited for us. And just, it was neat. It was really, really neat. So that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's the next thing we need to invite him then and to come. But that's awesome. So that's just wonderful. Anybody else? They, they ran the motel for years. Yeah, Hawkins Jewelry. Well, I remember that they were in um, Hastings at the mall when I first moved here in 86. I remember going to the mall with the Tyler boys, and they all knew who he was, and it was Hawkins Jewelry up there. I remember that. Yeah. So that's really cool. Anybody else? Anything else? I wasn't going to go to Kindle the Flame because I didn't have the extra. So Michael called me one morning and says, I'll pay for your way. Get registered up, so I get to go. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And we announced last night about um, men's conference, and the new the new guys, McCutcheons, are talking about coming, and maybe bringing some other people too. So I was like, we what did we count, Don? Maybe eight guys or so, something like that. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that would be awesome. We'd be really very excited about that. So. Praise the Lord. God's just doing some great things. Okay, we will let... What's that? Yes, we'll have you help. We will definitely, like you always do. <laughs> okay, anybody else have a praise report? Donna. Well, it's kind of a praise report, but it's kind of a prayer request, too. That Last week, I took Charlie to the hospital... And now he's in no more pain. He uh, passed away between 6 and 7 o'clock last night in Lincoln. So we're just hoping that his family will help us out with the arrangements and stuff because um, they, they found some of his family. He didn't know where any of his family was, but we found a cousin, so we're hoping his cousin will help us out with the funeral arrangements. But he's in no more pain. Amen. We'll put him that on the prayer list for everybody. Anybody else? Okay, well, let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for all that you're doing. And you're so faithful. And we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives and the lives of others. And you're such a good God. And we want to praise and worship you tonight. And we just thank you and give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father, we love you, we praise you, we bless you, we worship you tonight, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, we worship you, glory to God, we thank you, Jesus, glory to God, we worship you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, glory to God, we worship your holy name, we praise you, Lord Jesus, we bless you, Lord, glory to God, we worship you, Jesus, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, we bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We worship you, Jesus. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you tonight. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We just glorify your name. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your holy name. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. We worship you tonight. We thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, 
Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. We worship you. We thank you and we praise you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. A couple announcements. Next Tuesday is the Bondsman Grub and Grow um, Fire Pit Connection at the Crow Farm. So if there's any men, I don't see a whole lot of men here tonight. And the ones that are here, I think, have already signed up. But if anybody else knows of anybody, invite people to come to, come to this. We're getting a few more. So praise God. Yes, Don. I put him down. <laughs> I would. Don was concerned about Tim not being on there, so I got him on there so he can have a meal now. <laughs> so we got him on there, but um, invite some guys. Yeah, I don't think you're on there, are you? I'll put you on there. Okay, we'll put you on there. So praise the Lord. And then when you get your paper, I was meant to bring it in today. I didn't bring my paper in. But look at it, the second to the back page of the Kansas part, there is a harvest revival that's um, advertised this, this fourth of page or so. And that's, I'm excited about that. That Shane McCutcheon that's been coming, this is going to be, I think it's his sister's farm. They've got a brand new machine shed, and they are having an old-time revival in this machine shed, brand new machine shed, and they've got a bunch of people speaking. Royce Gonzalez is one of them, and Jaden Jorgensen is one of them, and there's a bunch of other guys, several, three, three or four other guys, and there's a girl from Nashville who's singing. And so this is on October 20th and 21st. And I think you come early, you can have soup and sandwiches. And then I think the meeting may be at 7. Look at, uh, we'll get all the information. But I believe God's doing something here. And so I'm, it's the 20th and 21st. It's a sa uh, Friday and Saturday. So I'm telling you about that way ahead of time. And then we're learning about the Auburn um, revival. And then Roy sent me this today that um, God is moving hundreds baptized in pond at Auburn University. So they're getting got baptized. So this is going on. And so when I'm just telling you this too because when Mrs. Hagen, um, this was from Winter Bible, and, and she's speaking during the 10 o'clock service, and she was talking about the Asbury revival that was going on back then, and she's giving some really good advice about it too. Very good things. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Yes, Kathy. With the what? Pray, on our southern border? Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. I, that's awesome. Yes, that's right. Praise God. That's awesome. Yes. Amen. God's doing some great things. Yeah, we were at a Zoom, we had a Zoom meeting here Monday night with that Intercessors for America, Nebraska chapter, and it was two hours, but it was really good. I mean, it was what's going on in Nebraska and all the prayer groups that are around our, our state, that's really awesome. There's so much prayer being given to God, and they know how to pray, scriptural prayers. So that's just really, it's exciting. Amen. So I just wanted to introduce that with, with Mrs. Hagen. It's called the move of the Spirit in our midst. So we'll get through part of it today. So amen. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Wow, it's so good to be in the presence of the Lord, isn't it? Turn around and shake hands with somebody and tell them you are glad they are here.
Well, my heart is rejoicing this morning. Students, where are my students? Hallelujah. I want all of you students that have been in Revive to stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you guys to look, stand, keep on standing for just a minute. I want you to look at these guys, these people, because listen, they have been the power plant behind what's happening right this week. They have been praying and praying. And I'm telling you what, you can sit down now. I'm telling you what, you know, it isn't, hasn't been just five minute prayers. It's been 30 minute prayers, 45 minute prayers. And I'll tell you what, God is moving. God is moving. So when I talk to my students, students, this is a time that unless you're taking notes on your devices, put them away. Put them away. You don't realize what a distraction that is for everybody. This is a time to hear from God. God has brought you to this place to hear his instructions for such a time as we are about to enter. I know that as, sorry, as I was preparing for this meeting, and you know, you always sometimes like to look back at, at history because history always repeats itself, you know, and we can learn from history. We can learn what to do and what not to do. And I was thinking about the fact that 20 years ago this week, Winter Bible Seminar was the last time that my father-in-law graced this pulpit. Because it was at Winter Bible Seminar 2003, I will always remember it, that it was a time that I know that always Brother Hagen would always uh, do the mornings and the evening services and that particular week, and you know, Brother Hagen never gave you a lot of advance notice. <laughs> Thankfully, my husband, you know, he's okay with that. I'm still working at it. <laughs> my husband and my daughter, you know, they just can just fly by the seat of their pants. <laughs> me yeah God's still working on me but I remember actually it was just I, I think it was probably Friday before winter Bible started and, and he said son you know I, I just don't think that I am going to be doing the morning meetings and so you need to do the morning meetings and I will always remember that as as my husband started preparing that and, and he started preaching about the glory of God. Anybody, was anybody here? The glory of God. And I remember, you know, and actually uh, that book, My God's Greater Glory, uh, pastor's book came from those services. And I would encourage any of you who doesn't have that book to go out to the bookstore and get it. I'll tell you what, I was reading it. And oh my goodness, it just stirred my heart. It just stirred my heart. But you know, Winter Bible Seminar has always been a time for us to come to get to regroup. You know, it's like... There's January, and then there's February, and it's a time to regroup, to, to refresh ourselves in the Lord. 
because you don't really realize sometimes for those of you that are from out of town or for those of you that are here in town, we do not realize that we sometimes are weary and well-doing. We don't realize how much that we need to get refreshed. And sorry to say, some people visit because they don't come to get refreshed. But it's a time to get refreshed. It's a time to get direction from the Lord. It's a time to pray out things. To pray out things. Because sometimes, you know, things do not come into reality until we pray them out. Until we pray them out. So this week, I want you to come not anticipating how God is going to move. God speak to, speaks to us in various ways. If you were here Sunday morning, oh my goodness, what a service that we did have. And I will have to commend the audience because sometimes, so many times that when God is moving and sometimes when God is moving in a, in a quiet way and people feel that anointing and so therefore sometimes they will burst out. That happened in Winter Bible Seminar 2003. I mean, Brother Hagen was giving an awesome prophecy and, and the anointing was so strong and, and all of a sudden uh, this person just burst out, just screaming. Well, unfortunately, the Holy Spirit, you, you, you can grieve him really quickly. And it was all shut down. Anybody remember that? It was all shut down and it's like, oh God. And I was so praying on Sunday morning because there's, there was a quietness. There was a worship time. And it's like, oh God, don't let anyone disturb this, your presence. And they didn't. They didn't. And as we're growing in the things of God, we will let God do what he wants to do in the manner that he wants to do it. We need to come expecting, but we don't need to put parameters of how God is going to talk to us. As my husband was talking about last night, you know, that some people, and Brother Hagman say this, some people move, miss the, the supernatural because they're looking for the spectacular. And I will tell you what, God doesn't move when we're looking for the spectacular. He moves how he wants to move. And many times we thwart that because we're putting pressure. And I'll tell you what, you can't put pressure on the Holy Spirit. Now wives, we may put pressure on our husbands <laughs> and help them to move when they need to move <laughs> and help them to do as they need to do sometime. <laughs> right after we got married, uh, you know, Pastor had just gotten out of the military. He was trying to get established in the ministry. And uh, it's not easy to get established. And he's trying to get meetings. And, and uh, I'm working uh, a job. You know, we, you have to have some steady income. I'm working a job, and, and you've heard that story is that, you know, he was 
feeling bad because here, you know, just got married. I'm not, God, I'm not supporting my wife. And you know what? The enemy will always come in and tempt you and try to get you out of God's plan for your life. Out of God's plan for your life. I know that from a teenager, I remember that a minister gave me a Bible and he, and he underlined, he said, I've lived my life by these scriptures and I want to give them to you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And I took that to heart and I determined in my heart, even as a teenager, that I was going to trust in God. I was going to let him lead me. I was going to let him guide me. I was going to let him direct me. I was going to listen to his voice. And so, you know, I came home one day and my husband says, honey, guess what? Now we, I mean, this was, we got married on December the 30th. And this is January. So we hadn't been married that long. And of course, many of you know our story. You know, we met by writing and, and we didn't really, and you know, he came home in August and we got married in December. So, I mean, honestly, you know, the one-on-one -on -one contact hadn't been very much. <laughs> letters, yes. But it's one thing to write letters, but it's one thing when you're face to face with them. <laughs> right? <laughs> So I came home and he said, guess what, honey? I got this call. The State Department wants to hire me. We'll be traveling all over the world because of what he, he was in in the military. We'll be traveling all over the world. And oh, the, the money is incredible. The enemy will always tempt you with money. He will always tempt you with money. And when he said that, in my stomach, and you know, I didn't know, I didn't know how to be led by the Spirit of God as I've been taught by my father-in-law, but all I knew that I always listened on the inside. And there was, oh man, I was sick at my stomach because my thoughts came, if we take this, we will never get back in the will and the plan of God because the temptation is too great. The finances are too much. And I thought, oh God, what can I do? We can't do this. Now, I lived in a generation that women didn't do what I did. But I think I always was out of my generation. <laughs> I lived in a generation that, you know, the wives, okay, honey, whatever, you know, whatever you want or whatever you, whatever we're supposed to do, I'm just going to follow you. Well, yes, we do need to follow the direction of God, but if they're not in the direction of God, we got to either pray or do something about it. And I thought, what can I do? And all of a sudden, out of my mouth came this. I want to tell you one thing. I married a preacher, and I intend on living with a preacher. Now, that scare, I, I was so scared, I ran out the door, slammed the door, and I left. <laughs> I seriously left. We didn't have any cell phones to call me back. <laughs> we didn't have any text messages. I honestly, I have no idea what I did after that or how long I stayed away. I know it wasn't overnight. But when I returned, hey, you know, it brought my husband back to the reality that, hey, I'm not going to bend to that temptation, but I'm going to follow you, God. 
I'm going to follow you, God. And it's so important to follow him. You know, we think that we have a plan for our life. And we try to fulfill that, but God has better plans for us. But the problem is we don't want to be patient enough to follow the path that he has. We want the shortcut. And he wants to take us along the scenic journey. It's very interesting sometimes. But I, I think about the fact that we, we try to tell God how we want a move from him. Yeah. You know, as we know, it's been prophesied more than once that there is a move. And Rhema, you are Rhema, will be a mighty part of that move. And as we see movement right now, as we see movement, if we're not careful, we will mess up that move. We will mess up that move. As I was studying this morning, I, the Lord brought me back to, and I don't remember what year it was, some of you will know, that Brother Hagen said, you need to be in such and such meeting because, you know, you'll miss half your life if you don't come. Well, I, I mean, I'll tell you what, at Rama, it is the fastest moving rumor mill that I've ever seen in my life. And this was before social media. <laughs> wow, we got to go into such and such. Oh, yeah. The, oh, I wonder what Brother Hagen's going to do. Oh, my, my, my. The prophet's going to be there. And people came to that meeting that had been, you know, had been followers of the ministry and been involved, but hadn't been back to Ramah in a long time, but they all flocked to this meeting for what they thought they were going to hear from God. They were looking for the spectacular and they missed the very supernatural thing that God was trying to do in that meeting. And they all went away disappointed. Well, I thought I was going to get direction. I thought I was going to find out what was going to happen in the days to come. Well, I'll tell you what. Every day, God is moving in a mighty way. If we'll just look to him and not man, and not woman, not humanity, we got to look to God. And I see, unfortunately, the very same thing can happen in these days. I'm not criticizing any move of God. But I am warning that if you're going somewhere, just because things are happening there, you're going for the wrong reasons and you're going to thwart the move of God. You're going to thwart the move of God. We know that things are happening there at Asbury. That's wonderful. But I so appreciate the fact that actually I just, I hadn't really watched the news in a lot these days. Because, uh, I don't know. I won't go there. <laughs> but the other day, I just 
happened to turn on and um, Tucker Carlson was on. And he started talking about the Asbury, Asbury move. And he showed some pictures, you know, of the young people praising God. And um, he said some very positive things. And then he said, and I was going to go to see for myself. But he said, I, you know, as I called, they responded to me and said, we appreciate you. We appreciate what you're doing. But we ask that you not come because this is not a place for news media. This is a place that people are connecting with God. And I appreciate that. And as I, I actually, as I was thinking about this just a while ago, the thoughts came to me. How, do, how does God talk to you? Usually by thoughts. The thoughts came to me because I know there were there are people that you know we don't we don't advertise. Oh, you need to come to Winter Bible Seminar. We don't we don't do that hype marketing because we want the people here that God is moving on so that God can do what he wants to do. And I mean, there were people that called me and said, I, I mean, just, I wasn't coming. I wasn't coming. I was going to watch online, but they said, we got to be there. I'm making plans. I'm going to, I'm going to get on the plane and I'm coming because there's just something I've got to be there. And I was thinking about this as Denise was telling me that there was an outbreak at ORU in, in chapel, you know, the students were just praising God and just, and I thought, you know, because I, I know that in these, this last day revival, it's not going to be just in one place. No. It's not going to be in just one place. And we don't have to go to a place in order to find our place. Oh, that's good. And I thought about it because, you know, I, I a lot of times I, I think a lot. And I, and sometimes, and I know over, oh, the past decade and stuff, and I, I just think, God, why, why are, they, I don't see, I see people that say that they're Christians, but I don't see a lot of fruit. I don't see a lot of change in their lives. And I, I'm not judging, and I'm not saying that they're not, they haven't accepted Christ as their Savior, but something more needs to happen. I don't, I don't see a lot of, I'm sorry, God, I messed up. Yeah. I just say, oh, God's grace is sufficient. Thank you, Father. You, oh, some of these songs just get me. You love me in spite of. And he does love us in spite of. But listen, he expects us to change. Yeah. And all the Pentecostal people can say what? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Amen. Right, Bob. <laughs> and, you know, I, I ponder this. I think about it. I, I ask God for answers. And as I, that just came, and this just came to me a while ago. May I can say it as God told it to me. This move of God will be different. Ah, oh, man, paseli, e pasuli, gimananshi, elabrigabashi. 
For you see, there are different reasons for this move. There are, ah, how do I say that, God? There are different things that need to happen in this move. And so he said to me, there will be moves over here of salvation. There will be moves over here of, of uh, submission, uh, of, of uh, calling out to God, of, of a repentance. That's it, repentance. I haven't seen a lot of repentance lately. Of repentance. Oh, Pasheli Brigabanshi, but he said this move. Ah, men Sele Bridoshi. This move in your midst is a move of drawing closer to God, listening to my voice. Ah, man, Pase, and fulfilling the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. And so you see this move of revival in our midst is different from the moves in other places. It's different, guys. Because you see, we know the truth. But we've let some of it slip. We're not as intense about some things as we used to be. We're not as intense about our confessions as we used to be. We're not as, uh, as ex and, uh, we're not, we don't use our faith as much as we used to. We're not as excited about the things of God as we used to be. Oh, yeah, I know. We all have battle scars. We've all had disappointments. I know that when came 2004 and we knew the direction, I knew that I would be doing the prayer in the morning as Brother Hagen always did. And I will tell you, I was scared silly. And I said, as Paul, I come to you in trembling because I know nothing but the power of God. Amen. And so I said, God, I need a confirmation from you. And I said, God, you know what? This is a winter Bible seminar. And we've had some good weather in winter Bible seminar. Well, we've had some lousy weather in winter Bible seminar in all the years that we've had winter Bible seminar. So this is 2004. I said, God, just for me, just for me, I need good weather. If it's for nobody else but me, I need good weather. And God granted it. He knew I needed that. I needed that. Oh, it's just a, you know, frivolous request. But he cares about all of our requests. And so... You know, every year, good weather, good weather, good yet weather. And then, 2022 came. <laughs> Horrible weather. Where's Marty? <laughs> he probably isn't even here because he didn't want me to pick on him. <laughs> the girls wanted to go sledding. And I, well, I'll tell you, I was disappointed. 
I was disappointed. And you know, always, everybody looks at me, oh, well, she's the weather woman. <laughs> and it appeared to be a failure. But that's what the enemy would try to do. Oh, my passe, Elianton, Jing, Batashi. There are those of you out here. Because there were things that you have asked God for and it didn't happen. Didn't happen. And because of that, you've hardened your heart. You've hardened your heart. And when we harden our heart, we can't hear from God. We can't hear from God. And so we cannot let seemingly failures keep us from receiving everything that God has for us and to following his plan. Now, you know, I've been in this way a long time. As the old people would say, they would say, I've been in the way. Well, yeah, sometimes they've been in the way. They need to get out of the way. <laughs> but let's say it this way. I've been a, a Christian long enough. My foundation is strong. And though that I was sitting down here, I, our people were trying to find ice melt. And I was sitting down here doling out money where they would find ice melt during the service to get things presentable. I did not lose my faith in God. Right. Yeah. I did not lose my faith in God. And yet, this year I said, God, I don't need a repeat of last year. Amen. I don't need that repeat. But he was so, this morning, so, and it wasn't even in my sermon. God, this morning just, yeah, just messed up my sermon. <laughs> but he does that a lot because he knows that I don't like it. <laughs> I want you to turn over to Hebrews 2. Now we're going to pray in a few minutes. Hebrews 2. I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. There was a warning here, and I believe that we need to heed this warning. It says, so we must listen, starting with verse 1. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard. Or we may drift away from it. For the message God delivered through angels has already, has always stood firm in every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus himself? and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak. And God confirmed by the message, by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit he chose. Now, I want you to go to um, chapter 3, starting with verse 1. Once again in the New Living Translation, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God, do you belong to God? And our partners with those called to heaven think carefully about this Jesus whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. For he was faithful to God who appointed him just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder but the one who built everything is God. 
Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of the truths God would reveal later. But Christ, as the Son, is in charge of God's entire house. And we are God's house if we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. That is why the Holy Spirit says, Today, when you hear His voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled, when they tested me in the wilderness. There your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. So I was angry with them. I don't tell you what, I don't want God to be angry with me. Amen. How about you? He said, so I was angry with them, and I said, their hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving. Turning your, you away from the living God, you must warn each other every day while it is still today so that none of you so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardening against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will all share in that and all that belongs to Christ. Remember what it says today. When you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. Don't harden your hearts is in there three times. Obviously, we didn't get it the first time. It seems like that God... Amen. It's good, isn't it? She, she's saying some strong things, but I think it's... Necessary in the body of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Very good. I also wanted to let you know, too, that um, we had such wonderful meetings Sunday morning, Sunday night with the Keatons, and Angela told me um, Sunday evening she, that God put it on her heart. She has a message entitled, How to Prosper in Troubled Times. And she has a CD of that. And she didn't get bring it with her, but um, they are sending it to us. And they're going to give it to every family in the church who wants one. And they asked how much it would cost, you know, to, to, to do that. I looked it up. It's not even 50 cents. It doesn't even cost 50 cents for us to do that. So they're going to take care of that for everybody who wants. We'll have a sign-up sheet. And if you want one, I, only if you're going to listen to it. If you're going to take it and collect dust with it then don't take it okay <laughs> but she said this is the these are the principles that we have followed through all the years you know and god's blessed them they've been in the mission field they just built a brand new house and moved in in march <laughs> and, and it's just about paid for completely and that, that god's blessing them so amen that's really good so if you want that and then another thing larry told me too before they left he said we go to a lot of churches and they don't have prayer times, and they don't support the missionaries. And I thought, you know, and I never said a word about it, but I know that there are churches like that, and I know that that Pastor Patsy drilled it into us to do that. I just wanted you to know that just made me feel so good when I heard, because he said there's churches that just, they don't have any corporate prayer, and they don't support any missionaries. And we do that here, amen, and we will always will, too, <laughs> amen. So I just want you to know some good things. And it was just really wonderful ministry that we had on Sunday. Very, very good. Amen. Okay. Yes. What's that? Oh, yeah. The room they stayed in at the motel, they made the bed. The trash can was empty. There was not a speck of anything. The only thing that you would realize that somebody had been there is they didn't quite make the bed the way we would have done it. And on the bed was lying a tip and a track. 
I'm glad she said that because if you were here Sunday night, you heard her speak that, right? And so she, they, they, they do what they preach because that's exactly what she said. If you're going to go to a motel room and you're going to leave a track, make sure that you give a good tip and make sure that you keep, keep leave the room. She says, we don't do the bed because we know it's going to be redone. But we, and I'm sure it was still looking good. We keep it. We leave the place looking immaculate. And she was really strong about in a restaurant, if you give a tip, if you give a tract, and you don't give a tip. That, and you know, Pastor Hagen and Craig have really gotten on people's cases at Rama about that too. So you gotta be a good witness. So yeah, for a three dollar missionary offering, we can get, a, hopefully Tim will be able to get the DV, DVDs made, but I know we have CDs of Sunday morning, Sunday night. So those are good. And that was the most practical, s- biblical based, sermon on preaching the gospel you know some people just get so i have to preach to everybody you know just they feel like they're condemned if they don't and some people are just scared to do anything and they don't do anything but this is so practical and it's just so basic and everybody can do something and she gave you abcs of what to do scriptures to pray whatever you know you can pray you can give tracts out there's just so many ways that you can help and i said came in at the end and said hey we could use some people at the fle- festival we can use people all the time come see me and i'll put you to work about you know getting the gospel to people so it's great it's really great okay we need prayer tonight we need for oh donna's there yeah for charlie and fam charlie's family and friends. Anybody else? Prayer requests? Anybody? What's that? Sure. I, um, I guess I, I don't know if, if anybody remembers Charlie working for the Hereford Inn. But he always mixed up his hamburger with like some peppers and everything like this. And um, and I guess he he started calling it the Herfurger. And um, I guess the cooks and the owners were wondering what was going on with their burgers because everybody kept ordering their hamburgers and stuff. And... He, he kind of tried to hide it from him, say, oh, nothing special, they're, they're just burgers. Well, <laughs> I guess apparently one of the one one night the, the owners went in there and snuck in and was watching him make them. And, and uh, they, they said, now we know what it is. You're adding stuff to them. And he goes, and they said, well, since uh, you did that and everybody's ordering them, we're going to call them the Herf Burgers. So that's how they came up with that. I remember when he worked at Velvet Rose, too, and he made them there. And I always would go and get gas or whatever, and I always talked with him. I always remember doing that. Um, yeah, yeah, Premier Stop. Yep, Country Store. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, it was the Hereford Inn right next to Dave's place. Okay, anybody else? Well, let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for this time that we've had together. Thank you for the move of God in, in our midst and that we will do what you called us to do, Father God, and be the people that you called us to be. And Father, we thank you that you are moving in our midst and that we see that and we're sensitive to that. We're not seeking the, the spectacular but we thank you, Father God, that we, we hunger for the supernatural. We hunger for, for men and women, boys and girls, to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And we just thank you for what you are doing in this area. And we continue to thank you that you will use us and that we are willing vessels fit for the master's use. We thank you for that, Father. And we lift up 
the family of Charlie Simmons and the friends, Father God, and just touch them and, and, and bless are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. And we just thank you for all, everything being taken care of concerning the funeral, all the different things that need to be done w are taken care of, Father. We just thank you for it and just thank you for your help, your comfort, and your grace. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we have some leftovers. Oh, we can, I'm about ready to, to, to um, dismiss without doing the offering. We don't want to do that. I was thinking about that. <laughs> so if you'd like to give tonight, you can get an offering envelope on the chair in front of you. Make your checks out to Living Faith Fellowship Church, LFFC. And we're giving um, towards Tony Cook Ministries here. And I had a tech text from Tony today, and it was about he's going to get to speak, let's see if I can find that here, and just read a little bit, maybe a portion of that, because it was really wonderful. As you're getting that ready, you're giving tithes and offerings, and if you want to give above and beyond, then you can um, give for the missions project for Tony. But here's, this is really cool. T John, because you all have been such faithful and generous supporters, I want to share a great report with you. I've been invited to go back to Turkey next January to be the main speaker at a conference sponsored by the Association of All Protestant Churches in the Nation. Isn't that something? Turkey is 99.9% .9 Muslim, but this group constitutes the 188 legally recognized Protestant churches in Turkey. These are not just word of faith or charismatic Pentecostal or even evangelical groups. I am tremendously excited about this, but due to the nature of it, we will only list international travel on our website during that trip. I am sharing this group's website in case you want to learn a bit more about them and what Protestant churches have contended with there. Your support makes these types, types of trips possible for us, and we appreciate you so much, Tony. Isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome? God's opening doors for them. It's just so, so neat. Praise God for the whole country there. Amen. Well, let's just go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to give. And Father, we thank you for good ground as Tony Cook Ministries, Father God, and, and all that, that we're doing, Father God. We thank you for our harvest. We claim that, and we thank you for it. And thank you for the needs of Living Faith Fellowship Church are met and the needs of each person giving tonight are met. We thank you, and we give you the glory and honor for all that you're doing Given and shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall be poured into your laps. We just thank you for it. Luke 638. We give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's say our confession together. As I tithe and give offerings, I believe in you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, sales and commissions, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, Gifts and surprises, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessings and increase, and greater victories in every circumstance. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs, that I may have more than enough to give to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I receive the offering. you jesus and just what i'm about ready to tell you that we have some cake left over from last night and some watermelon and a little dab of cantaloupe so we have some refreshments for you afterwards enjoy and have some fellowship together and have a good evening god bless you we love you have a good night <laughs>